if you've ever tried to sow tiny seeds, you understand it can be a royal pain in the, you know what, especially if you're a, a fumble fingers like me and tend to spill more seeds on the floor than on the dirt. Now I've tested seed starting tools and methods for going on 40 years now. So I'm really excited because in this video, I'm going to share with you my favorite tool for starting seeds. It's the micro soil blocker. But let me be clear with you. I didn't buy this soil blocker because I have a fetish for gardening gadgets. I bought it because I was really tired of making a mess. Using a soil blocker has been a big game changer for me. Now remember, that was 40 years ago. And guess what? I'm using the same one. I'll show you step by step how to use this eco-friendly tool, not only to simplify seed starting for you, but also to make the chore, well, more fun. And at the same time, deliver healthier seedlings that won't suffer from the dreaded transplant shock. And, and allow you to say goodbye to using so many plastic containers. And make sure you stick around to the end because remember in the beginning I talked about spilling seeds? I'm also going to share, no, I'll demonstrate for you a simple but highly effective method for picking up one seed at a time so you can sow seeds faster and place each seed exactly where you want it. So let's get started. Hi, it's Marion Owen, the gardener's coach. I'm here to cheer you on to help you grow into the gifted gardener you've always dreamed of becoming. The key to successful soil blocking is using a high quality seed starting mix that holds moisture. You can buy seed starting mixes or create your own. Here's a basic recipe. Combine equal parts of peat moss or coconut fiber, compost and vermiculite. You can also add fine worm castings, dried comfrey, dried kelp, or composted manure for an added nutritional boost. To your seed starting mix, add water and stir until it feels like cooked oatmeal. The soil should be moist enough to hold its shape. This step is very important. Let it sit for 30 to 60 minutes so it can absorb the water. To fill your micro soil blocker, turn it upside down. Take spoonfuls of soil and pack it into all the squares. Don't rush this step. You want your soil blocks to hold their shape and provide a sturdy foundation for your seeds. The last thing you want is for your soil blocks to crumble apart. To release the blocks, position your blocker where you want it onto a tray or other flat surface. Leave a one half inch gap so when you water the blocks, the water can flow between them. Press down on the plunger to release the compacted soil blocks. If some of the soil doesn't release, just set the plunger on top of the block again and repeat. The last little bit of soil will release on top. Now it's time to plant your seeds and, as promised earlier, this is my favorite way to handle tiny seeds. The technique is quite simple. What you do is you take your pencil tip and twirl it on top of one of the soil blocks. That way you moisten it and then you go over to your hand where the seeds are, pick up one seed and then place it in the middle of the soil block. It's just that simple. Each time you put your pencil tip to the soil block, it gets re-moistened. You go back and forth between your hand that's full of seeds to the soil block. It's so simple. It saves a ton of time and 
It's just so efficient and I absolutely love it. So I'm excited to share this with you. It'll change your life. If your seeds are older than a year, you may want to check their viability. That is, what are the chances of them germinating? I posted a link to my seed viability tip sheet in the description below. You may want to check that out. Now, once all your seeds are planted, you'd cover the seeds at this point, but only if they need covering. Refer to the seed packet for instructions. If so, lightly sprinkle a thin layer of additional soil mix or vermiculite over the top of the seeds, following the recommended planting depth for each seed variety. To water the cubes, use a spray bottle to mist them and be sure to label where you planted what seeds. You can also moisten the cubes by gently watering from a small nozzled watering can. You want to keep the soil blocks consistently moist, but not waterlogged. Tilt the tray back and forth to distribute the water where it needs to go. Think of it as irrigation on a small scale. Now you're done. Cover the blocks with a plastic dome or clear plastic wrap to maintain humidity and warmth. Keep a close eye on your soil blocks and watch for signs of germination. Once your seedlings have sprouted, remove the plastic cover to prevent mold from developing. When the seedlings have developed their first set of true leaves, that is their second set of leaves, it's time to transplant them into larger containers or directly into your garden. But that's another video. If you found this video helpful, please help me by giving it a thumbs up. It really helps. And if you'd like to support my channel, please consider subscribing. Meanwhile, if you have any questions or want to share your own seed starting stories, well, now that's, that's quite the tongue twister, isn't it? Feel free to leave a comment below. We all benefit, and I love hearing from fellow gardeners. And besides, I'm the one that answers your comments. That's it for now. I'll see you in the garden. Cheers. Now, some of you have asked, why do I love this blue jacket so much? I'll tell you a secret. I don't like to wear bras. See ya.